Hey guys, welcome back with another video on our channel Learn with Gigs. In this video, I will discuss with you a question which was asked by one of my subscriber. As you can see on the screen, I will read the question for you. Can you please make a video? As you can see, can you please make a video on interview questions? What challenges do you face in your projects? What is the proper way to answer this question? Can you give the sample answer for this question? So you should pre must prepare this before attending any Power BI interview. Okay, so that's why I have picked this question and we will discuss today this thing only. Okay, so let's start the video and before starting if you are new to this channel, please hit the like and subscribe button to stay updated with all my videos. Okay, let's start with the first challenge that you should answer in for this question. Okay, so the first challenge that you can mention is data integration issue. When we have to combine data from different sources, being it a non on prem source along with the cloud source and many more. OK, so we know that Power Query in Power BI have the capability to merge data from different data sources on the fly, but it still requires a combination of technical skills and data understanding. OK, and thus it limits scalability, right? And it increases the time it takes to analyze the data that we want to do. OK. So this point you can mention it in front of the interviewer. OK, let's move to the next point. So you can say since I have worked on few reports which are on direct query connection mode. So it becomes quite challenging if we have to create some measures which are time based. For example, if you are in a direct query connection mode report and you want to calculate uh, some uh, suppose you want to calculate year to date sales or if suppose you want to calculate quarter to date or month to date sales. So for that you know that in direct query connection mode the time intelligence functions are not allowed right. We can't directly use total YTD or total QTD or total MTD. We have to do some like we have to have some other way through which we can calculate this right. In those scenarios it becomes quite challenging and it becomes quite uh, difficult to uh, not I would, I would not say difficult but it, it requires a clear clarity of DAX functions then only you can uh, reach to that and create those particular measures. OK, so this thing you can mention. Let's move to the next challenge that you can mention issue related to color blindness from the end users point of view. So you might have heard from many of the end users that they are not able to uh, properly view the dashboard because of some uh, color blindness issues. So for that what we have to do we have to create a dark theme also a dark theme report also for those particular type of users right and that is the time taking process plus uh, you have to be very careful or you have to be uh, smart enough to create both a normal or a standard theme of report and also the dark theme of report. So, so the people who are comfortable in the standard theme, they can choose that standard theme. And if they want, if they have some issue related to color blindness, they can go to the dark theme and see the report as per their choice. OK, so this issue, they can, this issue or uh, this challenge is quite a common challenge. And this you can mention in front of the interviewer. OK, so let's move to the next challenge. So you can say that there was a requirement where row level security that is RLS had to be set up on one page of the report and no RLS had to be set up on the other page of the report. So it was quite challenging to execute it. OK, so that is basically the page level security in Power BI. You know, normally if we go with dynamic row, row level security and where, whenever we apply row level security, it is for all the pages in the report, right? But suppose there is a requirement that user says, no, I want to see all the uh, all the content of the report on one page, but I want to see my specific content on the other page. So in that case, it becomes quite challenging. It, it, it is quite a common uh, challenge that you can uh, mention in front of the uh, interviewer. OK, so this thing you can mention. Let's move to the next point. To educate or educate whatever you say each and every end user about the functioning of the report. OK, so as an end users, as an end user, Power BI is very new to them, right? They don't know anything about Power BI. How does it work? How does it function? So you have to educate them. You have to tell everything about uh, about the functioning, about the functioning of the report. How does the drill through? How does the drill down uh, action happens in Power BI? How to slice and dice? So, so all those things. So all those things you have to educate to the end users, right? And you have to do it regularly whenever they find any kind of problem related to the functioning of the report. OK. So this point you can mention to the interviewer. Let's move to the next challenge. To minimize the time taken by the report to open and display basically to optimize the report. It becomes quite challenging sometimes because because whenever you share a report to an end user through app support suppose so it becomes like the report rendering and opening time is quite a lot sometimes because of 
some complex DAX functions and various calculated columns that you have created in your report. So for in the, in those scenarios, we have to optimize our model. We have to optimize everything. Uh, we have to optimize our model. We have to optimize our DAX functions. Whatever we can do to increase the report renting. So that is quite a common challenge that you can mention to the interviewer. Okay. So let's move to the next point. Dealing with the impact of poor data quality resulting in data which is not credible on the Power BI dashboard. So in that case, it becomes very difficult to manage this data quality part. Okay. And it is it and thus it takes a lot of time to make this data credible and show it in the dashboard. Okay. So in this way, you can uh, mention this point. Let's move to the next point. Setting up and managing incremental refresh in the reports, it becomes quite complex and challenging. So as, as you know, as a developer, uh, you, if you are creating a report and if you want to set up incremental refresh, so you have to know everything about incremental refresh, how to set up it properly, right? And once you have set up, you have to publish it to the service. And once you have pub published it to the service, nobody else can download it from service, right? So you have to uh, like keep that particular report with yourself properly. Right, because nobody else can download it from uh, service. As a developer, you should keep it properly and maintain it. So it, it's it's kind of challenging uh, for a developer to maintain the, this kind of reports. Okay, so you can mention this point also. And now let's move to the last point, which is management of composite models in Power BI, which is quite a strenuous task. And one has to be very careful using these type of models. Composite models means where a model is comprised of both import mode and direct query connection mode tables, right? In that particular case, only we say that particular model is a composite model, right? And to manage it, it, it is very challenging, right? Whoever has worked on it, you know, to maintain or to manage the composite model, it becomes quite challenging. So whatever points I have discussed with you today, these are very important as per the challenges in a Power BI, a real Power BI project. And you can mention any of them, any like any number of them, right? So that's what I wanted to discuss with this video. And and if you like this content, then please share it with your friends too, so that uh, so that they also get prepared for this particular type of question if they face in any Power BI interview. Okay, thank you.